Welcome to American Lit, students. How are you tonight? Good. Very well. This is a little bit off topic, but does anyone happen to know who won the, Poli the uh, Nobel Prize for Literature today? <coughs> no? I heard his interview on NPR. Okay. <laughs> Mario Vargas Llosas from Peru. We're going to be talking about American Lit, but I thought that was important for you to know. He has a copious, huge body of work and novels and essays and was very political, but had some interesting things to say today about winning. Um, okay, so look up here. I envisioned us around a smaller table, but we'll just make do. You can just stand up, if you will, and look at this uh, collection of items here. And actually, why don't you come up and look them over and take one? You got it. And now I would like you to just take a piece of paper and just take a minute or two to respond either in words, could be a list, could be a sentence, could be a, like an insta, insta poem, or if you're more visually inclined and you would rather do a response with pencils or crayons, you can have that option as well. Just take a minute or two to respond to your object. Okay. This is not graded, this is not even collected. seconds more and I'm going to ask a couple of you if you wouldn't mind just to share your list just for fun. A list? Or your words or your sentence or your whatever response you have to your object. Some of you are very kinesthetic. You're throwing your objects. Okay. <laughs> okay. What, uh, how did you respond to your object? I said my object is fun to bounce and throw for my dog but it's not fun to play with or bounce after my dog is mad. <laughs> okay. I can understand that. Very nice. What did you say, Wayne? Uh, I said, a beautiful home for such a lowly creature. <laughs> Very nice. Gwen? I said that I have a Phillips screwdriver with a chrome vanadium shaft. Excellent. And an ergonomic, grippy handle that would be very useful if you had Phillips head screws, but not quite so useful if you had a slotted head screw. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm loving this. You are such poets. I love it. Anybody else care to share what they wrote? Or how, yes. I love pumpkins because they're bright and orange, and I love pumpkin flavored. Food. Wonderful. Thank you. I loved your responses. This would go well with that. I'm going to hand out a poem tonight for you to explore. Keep it on this side. I hope I have you share because I have more students than I sure. thought. Um, keep it on that one side. Here you go. One for you. Mm. To share if you don't want to. So. People actually turn it over later. Three words, wake up and do this. Sir, did you assign feedback yes. to people? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, Christine, would you mind? Well, first take us uh, about 30 seconds or a minute to read the poem to yourselves. <clears throat> and Christine, would you stand and read that aloud to us? Uh, which one? The Red Wheelbarrow. The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. Good, thank you. Brief, succinct, and to the point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I want you to think about and ponder with your partners how that might relate to this statement, which is actually a quotation of William Carlos Williams, the poet. And also just share with your partner, and I heard some of you beginning to do that, which is totally appropriate, your response to this poem. Okay. But also, this, is, this was one of his sort of manifestos, you might say. We'll get more into this later. So you're talking to your partner. Like every idea is 
still trying to figure out what glazed with rain was. Indeed. What part of these white chickens play? <laughs> Yeah. This is a dinner time. Do the chickens need the water? <laughs> no, no, no. They're too low, right? No. So I don't know what exactly the chickens are. He's going to kill the chickens. 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 He's going to it's about so much of the we're so hungry. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, oh, this is about world poverty. It's a red wheelbarrow. No, no, so this is about it's, poverty. It's red with the chicken. Okay, back to uh, Eyes to the Front. I heard some great discussions. Um, would any pair care to share some thoughts that they had? And so, or some observations. We, we think it's a poem. Well, maybe I shouldn't say we. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a poem about world poverty. Okay. Okay. The chickens, okay. chickens Great. fill the need. You know, everything depends on Good. a red wheelbarrow, which represents the wealth of the world, and, yeah. the, and bringing chickens to the world. It could well be a chicken in every pot, right? Mm -hmm. Christine, what did you guys have to mention? Um, well, I like. That's the beauty of poetry. You I, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a big thought poetry person. Right. I don't, I don't enjoy that kind of poetry. But what I did enjoy about this was that it was very like here and now. Like you can actually picture him. You know, um, in the moment, writing exactly what he sees in a very little lyrical manner, as opposed to sitting in a desk and thinking big thoughts and then writing them down. <laughs> so it's in it's about the moment and the things that are present, not big ideas. Actually, that's like that. very true. Thank you. Very true. Anybody else care to share? So you don't think it's about world poverty? <laughs> well, I think just the very first line. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow shows. Like your reliance upon other things rather than yourself, that you're constantly relying on technology or you know these machinery things instead of relying upon yourself to do things. Which, okay, interesting, good. And anyone else care to share? Or if I can just go on, whichever you want. Okay. Um, well, that was that was very interesting. I heard some other interesting observations up here. They noticed no punctuation, right? Is there much rhyme? No. Not much rhyme either, huh? Well, let me tell you that um, actually what Christine said was so accurate in terms of what William Carlos Williams was, what movement he was a part of, and what he was trying to do with his poetry. So it's almost anti-poetry if you think about poetry the way we've been traditionally taught it, which is lofty ideas, abstraction, um, prettiness, sentimentality, and all of that. And so I want to just tell you that we're going to be learning about the poets of an, a movement called Imagism. But tonight we're focusing on William Carl Carlos Williams, who was one of those. By the second decade of about the 20th, of the 20th century, which I want to say about the 1920s, um, American poets were in, deeply engaged in a period of experimentation. And it was really coming from a reaction against exactly what we just mentioned, abstraction, formality, sentimentality, prettiness, and all of the rules that had governed poetry heretofore in the 1800s and so on. So um, out of this, and some of the poets who were central to this movement were Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot, um, both American. This movement became, came to be called Imagism, uh, and they sought to rid, as I said, poetry of its artifici artificiality and el elaborate um, rules and so on. So they were focusing on, instead of these abstract and lofty ideas, the raw power of the image itself, the thing itself, to convey, to express their thoughts and feelings okay, to the world. Um, they also were 